Come on! Get him, get him, get him. Uh, critical, okay. Turn, 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 turn. Come on, you fat bitch. Really are for, oh. <sighs> this happens to be possibly the worst Operation Summer Event vehicle that I have ever gotten my hands to test drive or fly. I was really excited for this aircraft. It's got a unique history. Unfortunately, it's probably for the better. This thing had an incredibly short service life in the real world, and I expect that it will in War Thunder. It's basically did an arrival here, and it's 0.3 battle rating higher than a better aircraft, the F-11F, which, again, is a much better uh, airframe than this one. What you're getting here is basically an A4 Skyhawk that can carry AIM-9Bs, right? And it can also carry uh, Mighty Mouses. There's no customizable loadout for this machine. There is no countermeasures. This thing is basically a very heavy A4 Skyhawk, but with an afterburner, as I said before. The only saving grace really comes out of the cannons that this thing has, the Colt Mark 12s. Though it's only got 260 rounds of ammunition, it is a little lackluster. And the radar is a nice addition, although its usability in game is probably subject to debate, considering it doesn't really have the greatest missiles out there. And should I mention, this thing has a ridiculous repair cost of 20,000 silver lions. Yeah, a machine that isn't exactly starting off on the right foot. Speaking of which, let's try and make this machine work its ass off. Well, we can't really work its ass off when you do negative 2Gs. Yep, that's right, this thing has the same wing ripping issue as any of the A4s, and it feels incredibly sluggish. Trying to outdive and just run away from an enemy there. We're going to end up by death spiraling and trying to recover rather slowly. Now, I don't put a, a missile out on this Yak-38, uh, but he'll easily avoid it due to the missile arc being a bit too low. Watch this. Doing 970 kilometers an hour, it's not pulling up. And this is typical even when I don't have the, <laughs> the left wing uh, or a hole in my left wing as well, I should say. Yeah, this thing's elevator is incredibly poor, and with no countermeasures, too, it makes dogfighting a pain in the ass. Alas, we are making our way back to the airfield, although that MiG-21 does look a little bit juicy. So we'll try and curse this thing and coerce this thing to move towards that MiG-21. Alright, he sees that we're turning him towards him now, so let's see if we can actually get a bit of a turn going. Even with combat flaps, this thing is utterly horrible. As you see, I'm sort of really struggling with the airframe here. Give it a good old spray. And, well, that SPSK says good night as we go back and potentially uh, make it back to the airfield. Who knows? Now, it does have an air brake, which is fairly useful. But again, it is really subject to, you know, a situation where you absolutely need it. For example, like landing on an airfield where... We might need a bit more speed, or we might need a little less. Regardless, it does slap sometimes, but oftentimes you end up by ripping. Which I forgot to include in that clip before, but oh well, we're going to run with it. Now the missiles, they can oftentimes surprise blind players, like for example this Milan here. Sometimes you can slap with that one, and other times you get really good matches depending on, well, your teamwork. Now, because it has a decent top speed and a very good climb rate, this machine is particularly interesting. More of an interceptor. Speaking of intercepting things, there goes that T2. He didn't stand a chance. Anyway, we're going to pull back around. We're going to try and target that lightning as the rest of my team crumbles. Unfortunately, sometimes when you're doing well, you ever have those matches where you're doing well in an aircraft and then all of a sudden the rest of the team get abolished? Yeah, well, that's about to happen to me right now. Anyway, Lightning thinks he's being clever coming up behind me. Give him the old rat -a tat as he's tried to give the rat -a tat to me. And, well, that's our triple strike right there. Now, the rest of the team gets a bit of a shit to the brain, and I end up by taking an AIM-9L from an A-10. Speaking of A-10s, this thing is particularly good at taking out A-10s. Yeah, go figure. Mind you, I think any aircraft can really take out them. Anyhow, I wanted to show off this double kill here with the Sea Vixens as uh, they do try going head on. Nice try there, buddy. Not quite that stupid, though. I like my head-ons, but I also don't like my head-ons. So, let's try and get this guy from a different angle. 
That's a good angle, I reckon. Set him on fire and cause him to burn. Hopefully he'll burn out soon. Or else not, I'm going to have a missile for him. There we go. Yeah, fascinating aircraft this one is. Unfortunately, when going for a dive on the A4, I get surprised by something around my 6 here. Yeah, I've got no choice but to loop back down. That A4 has infinitely more maneuverable than I am. Even though this thing is quite maneuverable at lower speeds, it's high speed handling is atrocious as well. It's really, it doesn't really do anything. So there we go, rip the wing. Classic mistake right there. And then, well, I may as well just sacrifice it all. Go ahead with an A4. <laughs> right, I don't want to be in this match anymore. I'm not going to fly with a, a, a dead left wing. Next game, killing a Jaguar here. Goes to a bit of a flat spin, pulling out, then again rip the wing at negative two Gs. Yeah, in fact, I didn't rip there. What actually happened was a missile from an A5C basically clipped me, and then here there's a second missile. Now, anyway, G91's being a bit special. This match, then we go get a kill on him, and I wanted to showcase this. Oh, treat! Because flying through a tree and getting a critical hit wasn't enough. Let's go take out a MiG-21. I love the guns on this thing. Absolutely fantastic. The placement of them at 400 targeting distance is beautiful. Now the fuel, I tend to take about 20 minutes on average, depending on what the match is. On larger maps, you know, 24 minutes is good. But you know, coming across this SU-7, he has no idea I'm here. We're just going to give him the right out of the guns. It's just so much more easier. And uh, last clip today is an actual decent dogfight. There are three to four enemy aircraft behind me and are rolling around me in this sort of twirl. We do take damage in our left wing. As you can see, it's incredibly easy to take damage. Trying to hit that Yak-30. I want that Yak-30 dead. I didn't waste a considerable amount of my ammunition there. Pro tip when using this thing, I found it out after uh, playing this match. You can use a weapon selector to select one gun at a time, thus saving a bunch of ammunition. Anyhow, I'm going to hit the ground there. He doesn't know that, but uh, rip his wing. Basically, playing off. The good little uh, interesting fight. But unfortunately, there are so many other aircraft around that I can't really do much. I'm trying to pull the airframe around, even with combat flaps, it's just not really going to do anything. Of course, what else do, what option do I have? I'm, you know, they're flying directly at me, so... Why not? Yeah. This thing is utter garbage. I mean, I'm sure it will get better. Is it really worth your effort, though, and worth the grind? I'm not entirely sure. It's something that I, I, I was really, really excited for, and I feel like after the, the 20 matches that I've played in this machine, I haven't really Im improved due to the fact that it's incredibly likely that you'll rip your wings... Or some other extraordinary event will actually happen, causing you to crash into a tree or some something like that. Again, no countermeasures makes this thing a bit of a pain. It doesn't turn particularly well unless you're at very low speeds. It is a carrier-based interceptor, which apparently the US Navy didn't need, so there's that. And with 20,000 silver lions uh, to repair this machine, is it worth it? No, it is certainly not. And I mean, I know this has been a short eight minute video, but this thing is god awful. And even worse than the Operation 2020 vehicle, which was the F-11F Tiger. Yeah, that thing was fun and interesting when it came out. This at 9.3 is a bit of a struggle bus, and though it doesn't really sit anywhere else, because you can't really put it at 8.7, because it will probably dominate at that kind of battle rating. Even 9.0 wouldn't be good enough for this one either. It's sort of in a weird place because of its radar, and I think that's why they've put it up there. Considering its flight performance and its insane climb rate, it's it's rather disappointing to see. I feel like that had it had more guns, more ammunition, it would have been fantastic. Uh, and the rate of climb is really the only thing to talk about of this machine. Everything else is rather iffy and does compromise an overall very interesting aircraft that could have been a bit better. Well, I guess it's a true example of what it is to its real life counterpart. Right, I'm off to play 30 more matches in this machine to try and understand if I can actually get a decent game in it. My name is Ash, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.